tired of being single and alone? Are you wondering why you can't meet Mr. Right or even Mr. Right now? Tune in to this video because I'm going to tell you everything that I did, everything I changed in my life to go from completely alone and utterly lonely to meeting Mr. Right the absolute greatest love of my life. Hey guys, you know the drill. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. And also hit that cute little bell to make sure you're notified every single time we put up a new video. I know you don't wanna miss a thing around here. Hey everybody, Kelly Alexa here, serial entrepreneur, fitness fanatic, confidence coach, most recently keto convert, but I'm also somebody who after my divorce in 2007 was a woman who found herself hopelessly single and wondering if I was going to be pathetically single for the rest of my life. I was down, I was depressed, I thought I was going to be this way like forever single for the rest of my life. I made a decision however 10 years later and yeah it was a long stretch from 2007 to 2017 of quite a lot of unhappiness in there. But in 2017, I made a decision that I was going to meet the love of my life. And guess what? I did. I manifested the greatest love of my life. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything I did in 2017, everything I changed behaviorally and tactically, if you will, so that you can learn from me. Because if I can do it, I absolutely believe any of you can do it and manifest the greatest love of your life. I've never been happier. I wake up every day and I pinch myself and that's what I want for you. So tune in to learn how you can find Mr. Right as well. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about, we're gonna have two major parts. In the first part, I am gonna talk about what you're probably doing like I did that's keeping you from finding Mr. Right. And then in the second part of the video, I'm going to talk about what you should be doing to find Mr. Right. Okay. So part one is kind of what not to do. Part two is what to do. The first step, and this is not necessarily in order of importance, but the first thing, and of course I want to reiterate, these are all mistakes that I was absolutely making that kept me from meeting my dream man, my husband. Number one, you're not getting out there. This sounds ridiculously simple, but I guarantee you, if some of you are listening to this and you're thinking about it, you're gonna realize that it's true. So my trainer would say this to me, my friends would say this to me, my family would say this to me, I would hear it from business associates all the time, they would say, you know, I would constantly be complaining about how I, was, how I was single, how I never met anybody, yada, yada, yada. And they would say, what are you doing this weekend? Nothing. Um, you know, and I would talk about, you know, why I never meet anybody. And they'd say, you know, well, well what are your plans this weekend? Nothing. And the bottom line is they would say, like, how are you ever going to meet anybody if you never do anything? And for the longest time, I was never on any dating sites. I never, and I would say, and I bet a lot of you are saying, well, how can I go out if I don't have anybody to go out with? And that is to some degree true. All of my friends were um, in couples. So they were in boyfriend, girlfriends or um, married. And so I felt like I didn't have even single friends to go out with. And I, but I use that as, a, as an excuse. I use that as, an, as a crutch. Going, looking back, I, I could have found other social groups to get involved with and, and things that I could do. Um, there's, gosh, even just Facebook groups. You can find common interests and, and groups and clubs to go out with so that you can go out and meet people. There are things that you could be doing to get out there. But what I did is I, would just stay in my apartment all the time and watch TV by myself and be sad. And that's one thing that you really, really, really need to not do. This is one of the reasons that you're not finding Mr. Right is I bet, am I right? You're not getting out there. That's gotta stop. Part two, I 
already alluded to this in my first point, but if you're constantly talking about your bad track record, like I just, I just, you, you heard me say this in, in my first point. I was constantly saying, I never meet anybody. I don't have anybody to go out with. Um, all of my friends are, are married. All of my friends have boyfriends. I don't have anybody to go out with. I never meet anybody. Um, if you're constantly talking about that, if you're constantly talking about your, your bad dates, nobody ever asks me out. Um, I, that was me. I was constantly, constantly, constantly talking about my bad track record, my divorce, my bad history. Um, there really, really, really is something, whether you've done any reading on this or not, um, the more that you talk about something, the more that your brain is hearing it, the more that it's soaking that in and the more that it's starting to believe what you're telling it like oh I'm never going to meet anybody I'm always going to be alone you can't keep feeding your brain that 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 line of thought not to mention the fact that then you're focusing only on the negativity versus where you want to go and it's I'm going to do a slight sidebar here but when I was uh, doing a marketing campaign with Chevy Corvette one of the things that they did, they took us, all of us that were participating, there were about six of us that were allowed to drive this Chevy Corvette out in Vegas on a, on a track. Some of you are listening to this going, where is she going with this? Where is she going with this? I'm making a point, trust me. They took us out on a track. Um, we were, we were going to be allowed to race this car. And I was in, I was being trained by a professional driver. And one of the things that this professional driver said to me when he was training me in this car is when you're going super fast in this car on a racetrack it doesn't stop stop looking at the steering wheel stop looking at you know the road right in front of you look where you want the car to go and that's such a great metaphor or an analogy for life and that's exactly what i want to say to you about your thoughts what you say um even even just well obviously with thoughts that's what you're thinking same thing is is what you're saying same principle if you're constantly talking about negative negative history negative thoughts negative concepts that's basically you guiding your life you're guiding your brain to in, into a negative place you've got to start thinking about guiding your brain to where you want to go in life. If that's where you want to go, and that's what we're going to talk about in part two, that's the art of manifestation. That's the art of the law of attraction. You start talking about what you want to create, not what your history is. You're not looking, again, I'm going to bring it back to that car example. You're not looking in the rear view mirror. That's not where you're going. Your, your life is where you want, it, it, you're talking about, you're focused on where you want to go, who you want to meet, where your life, your, your only focus should be the future, not the past. So stop talking about the past. Stop talking about what's happened. Stop talking about anything you want to avoid. If, if everything in the past has been upsetting, don't give it any more power by talking about it. The more that you talk about it, the more that you um, rehash it, the more that you um, bring it. And this goes for, doesn't have to just do it your romantic life this has to do with your business life this has to do with your family life this has to do with anything i certainly did this in my business life in many areas of my life if you look at any area of your life and you are constantly picking up the phone calling people talking about it you wouldn't believe this and you're spending hours and hours of your time rehashing bad things that have happened to you number one you're not taking any action to improve your way of life you're not moving yourself forward and every time that you keep talking about bad things that have happened in the past you are literally reliving that experience you are stressing out again about that experience again and you are just probably raising your cortisol which is going to be bad for your health it's just it's no bueno people so bad point number two bad action number two is constantly talking about your bad history, your bad luck, oh, woe is me. That is a, a, a long road to nowhere. It's a, it's a train ticket to nowhere. You've got to stop it. This one's pretty simple. Number three, you keep doing the same things. Um, this would go for, you can combine number one and number two. 
if you just keep doing the same things, continually keep talking about your bad history, um, keep staying in every weekend, keep not getting on dating sites, whatever it is, for years, when I told you guys that I was divorced in 2007 and it wasn't until 2017 that I made this decision, that was 10 years of my life that I had just a miserable dating experience and many of the same things. I met crappy guys, I had miserable dating experiences, I was always complaining, I was always alone, my parents were always wondering like, why is Kelly spending her weekends alone? I was always the person that people would go, you're so pretty, why are you always alone? Why are you not married, blah, blah, blah. This was my life for 10 years, but you know what? I never changed anything and I, I was constantly complaining. I was constantly complaining. Why am I only asked out by 25-year-old guys? Why am I only asked out by married men? I, I sure kept doing the same things. I complained. I called attention to the same things that kept happening. I kept staying in. I kept having the same conversations with the same friends about the same things. The same stuff I just kept regurgitating. So if you change nothing, nothing will change. End of story. This one might not seem so obvious, but I know that this was also true for me. Um, I think a lot of women in particular make this mistake of thinking that every date has to be this penultimate um, dating or marriage opportunity as opposed to, um, and this is I think what prevents a lot of women from getting out there, is just just look at dating as just something fun and, and just just go for it like get on some that i i i made such a big deal about dating and instead of just letting myself have fun and and saying well you know i'm just going to go on a date and who cares maybe if i'm going to meet a guy and and have dinner or what like you women put such pressure and such expectation like this this could be it this could be the guy and yeah it could be the guy but maybe it'll just be somebody you meet and if it ends up not working out like it could just be one night of your life I think men tend to be a little bit more that way than women they can be more casual and just write it off if it doesn't work out women make it this big huge life or death thing and I think that's why we can tend to avoid dating or we let ourselves get too hurt or upset if a date doesn't work out. We really should look at it more as something funny and something fun and let yourself be surprised when it, when it does work out. But too many women get way too worked up. They let their expectations go way too crazy and, and then they get too disappointed too fast and they give up too fast. Don't do that. This is probably the single most important thing that I realize in retrospect. Without question, I did this for years, took me probably until I started seeing a therapist to realize this, but I know it is very much more common with women. You have to realize that you are worthy of outstanding love. You are worthy of somebody treating you like a queen you are worthy of what you want it doesn't mean you're worthy of the perfect man there's no perfect man and guess what you're not perfect you're not going to be perfect for any man um you're going to be close to damn perfect for a guy but none of us are perfect you can't expect a man to be perfect um but you've got to have higher expectations for yourself and stop viewing yourself as clearance material and that you should be thankful for any guy who's gonna give you the time of day. So many women, I was there for years and most women that I know were like that where we're trying to get the guy to like, we're trying to mold ourselves into everything a guy wants us to be. And that is just so messed up. It shouldn't be that way. You've got to just realize how valuable of a creature you are, how worthy you are, how special you are, how unique you are, and carry yourself with confidence and never, ever, 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 ever settle for anything less 
than what you deserve because when the two right people get together it is the most magical beautiful thing ever when i when i finally made the decision i really started to see in 2015 evidence it was like i started hanging around some other couples and it was it was some of the couples were like in their late 30s and 40s and then i started to see some other couples that were in their 40s and 50s and I just saw couples who were together and, and I'm like, those are people who are like doing life together. That's what I wanted. I, I didn't, you know, I saw certainly no shortage of bad marriages and horrible relationships. But like when you see two people who just are crazy about each other, like that's what I want. And that's what we have. And I, I have the type of like crazy, amazing once in a lifetime love that you can't even imagine that you pinch yourself about every day and it's it's not it's not one in a million um there's i know plenty of other people that have it it's but on the other hand it's not commonplace at all but it's doable you just have to hold out for the right person so please 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 understand that's got to be the one last thing i say in the what not to do Stop thinking you're not worthy. Stop thinking you're clearance material. Stop settling. Stop just going for the first semi-right thing that comes along, this first semi-right guy that gives you the time of day. Wait for the person that is the absolute right person that is right and perfect for you, period. Okay, so we are halfway through this video. How many of you are completely relating to everything I've said so far. How many of you are going, oh my gosh, this is so me? Because I can tell you everything I've said in the first part of this video is exactly everything that I was doing before I made the changes in my life in 2017. I'm serious. So get ready. And before we go into part two, I just want to hear from you. If, if this is resonating with you, give the video a like. If you hate it, give it a dislike. That's totally fine. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if this is resonating with you. If you're ready to make a big change, if you're ready to manifest love, if you're ready to find Mr. Right, I want to hear from you because if you, I, I would be so excited. This would be the coolest thing ever to hear the people watch this video and did what I did. And then I'm going to see people trickling in two, three, six months from now. And I'm going to hear stories of people finding love. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Okay, so let me tell you what I did in 2017 to manifest the greatest love in my life. So um, first and foremost, I made a decision. I made a declaration to myself. I said... I'm going to meet the love of my life this year. I don't really remember what preceded that. Um, again, I just remember being around a lot of other people, a lot of other couples. I was tired of being alone. I just remember very strongly saying enough is enough. I'm tired of being alone. I'm tired of of this life and I deserve this and I finally realized I deserve this and I made I just remember it was like a line in the sand I said I am going to meet the love of my life this year I am I'm going to meet him and, and I'm going to manifest him and this is this is going to happen and here's the thing there's a there's a difference between wishing for something and making a declaration and I will I will also link down below in the comments or in the description to a podcast that I recorded on making a declaration. Because when you set an intention and you make a declaration in your life, particularly if you don't just keep it to yourself, but if you tell people in your life, even better, if you do, if you go on a YouTube channel or if you go on your social media or you write it on your blog, um, if you make a declaration in your life, there is power behind that. And if you back that up by belief, which is point number two, without question, I, I never wavered in my belief. I believed that I was going to meet the love of my life. I made this decision and I started praying about it like every single day. And I just had this unreasonable belief that I was going to meet the love of my life that year. And even though it might seem crazy to you that are listening, it might seem crazy to other people, 
Um, maybe it even seems crazy to my husband sometimes when he listens to me. Um, it, it, it worked. There's no one that can doubt that, that it worked. So I made a declaration. I never ever wavered. I never doubted. And I started to take little steps throughout the year and, and started making changes in my attitude. I made, I, I did things every day that I, I started reading books on manifestation on the law of attraction. I, every day when I said my prayers, I prayed for this man to come into my life. I prayed for him as if I knew him. I, I just, I believed that he was going to be in Texas. I believed he was older than me. I prayed for the specific attributes that I wanted. I wanted someone older. I wanted someone financially stable. I wanted somebody who wasn't going to like other men. I didn't want somebody who was going to like take me for a financial ride. Um, I, you know, I, I actually went when I was visiting a friend, I was actually on a business trip in Naples and I went for the first, my first ever reading with the spiritual into it. And um, I didn't know, like, I'm a Christian, so I didn't know if I was like, walking the line and I was going to piss off God but I went and I got a reading from her and she kind of gave me the vibe too that I was going to meet somebody and she said you know based on what she saw in me she's like you need to ask God for a sign because um you you've had such a bad history with men that when this guy comes in who's so great and so different you're not going to trust him. You're, you're not going to believe that it's real. And I'm like, that makes kind of sense. So I, when I started saying my prayers, I, I asked for a sign. And I didn't tell anybody what the sign was that I asked for. And I, I told nobody until after Steve and I met. I didn't tell anybody. And um, so I asked for a very specific sentence that a phrase that he would say and um, I didn't tell anybody and it wasn't until after we met that he the first weekend we were together he said that phrase because it actually came up as part of a song that was playing and he said I think this is our song and I'm like oh I literally had chills because like he had no idea that I had asked for that sign he had never heard that song. I had never heard that song. Somehow it was on a playlist that we were listening to. And then he said, I think this is our song. And to this day, he's like, why would I have said, I think that's our song? I just heard that song. But that was the sign. I also had asked, when I asked for a sign, I asked for a man that would do a grand gesture. Like, because I was always the one making the gesture for the guy. I was always making the effort for the guys in my life. I was always going above and beyond for the guys. And I asked for the guy to make a grand gesture. Well, Steve and I met on a dating site. So there's the other thing I did to change. I got on a dating site, went outside of my comfort zone um, and got on a dating site. That's how we met. Um, we met, um, I was, um, it was, it was a dating site called Elite Singles. And um, we, we met, we started texting back and forth. It was actually the end of 2017 and I was home for um, Christmas break. And so we were making plans that we would have our first date when I got back to Austin, Texas in January. Well, it ended, it ended up that we were texting back and forth so much that he said, you know what, I'm looking at flights. Why don't I just come up to Chicago? So hello, grand gesture. It was like negative 20 degrees. He'd never been in cold weather before. He flew up to Chicago because he didn't want to wait to take me out. And so he flew up to Chicago. We spent the entire weekend together. That's when he told me um, about the, the sign. Um, so the sign came true when he said that weekend, grand gesture. But I'm backtracking a little bit. I know I kind of went forward and back, but I, but... As you can see, I, I made the declaration. I believed that it was going to happen. I went to see a spiritual into it. I'd never done that before in my life. Um, she said that I should, I should um, ask for a sign. I'm like, I'm going to ask for a sign. 
I also did little crazy things. Now, now this is also part of uh, the law of, of manifestation. You know, they say if you want love, then you put little signs of, of, of want, you know, things that, that represent love all over your house. So I, I don't have it here. It's in my bedroom, but I had stones like this that said love and I put them all over my house. I bought a dresser that was in my bedroom that was from Pier One and it had love and I put, and it was um, in my bedroom. So I had a dresser that had love. I put a um, ring on my hand. Now I realize I don't have my wedding ring on while I'm recording this video. So I put a, I had a, um, it was a uh, fake diamond ring, but I wore a fake diamond ring every morning when I would say my prayers and I put it on my ring finger. I bought a crystal that represented um, the manifestation of, of love and I put it, I, I wore a choker around my neck um, that had a very specific, um, you, you're the, it, was, it was the black one and I'm, I'm not, I'm actually starting to study crystals again right now, but it was a black one and I would wear that every day. So I was doing the crystals, I was doing, I had the stones all over the house, I had, you know, little signs with love all over the house. I would light my candles that had, you know, I bought certain candles. I will link to all of this stuff too. There were certain candles that I would burn every morning. So I would, I did the symbolic stuff. I did the prayers. I did, um, you know, the rocks that said love. I, um, you know, I didn't create offerings. Don't, I didn't go that far. It wasn't like doing voodoo or anything like that, but I went all in and it's funny because I remember also being in Florida and I remember my friend Amanda Tresk wanting to send, set me up with her cousin and we were at dinner one night and I'm like, you know what, I, he's really young and I appreciate it. But I said to her, I'm like, I just know, and you can ask my friend Lauren Fisher because she was at the table too. I'm like, I just know, I just know I'm going to meet the love of my life this year and I know that that's not him. So I appreciate it, but I can't do it. And they were all at the table like, okay. So I think you guys are picking up on, you know, like the theme here. In 2017, I behaved completely differently than the way that I behaved in 2007 to 2017. From 2007 to 2017, I didn't believe in myself. I was completely insecure. I saw myself as clearance material. I, every single time I had another bad relationship, I just would get more down on myself, um, more why me. I would ruminate in my failures. I would look at every relationship failure as my fault. Um, I wallowed in my misery. Um, I. I just kept doing the same thing over and over again. I continually talked about the negative stuff. I continually talked about the why me. I was continually sad. I was continually, you know, depressed and I stayed alone and I, I, I just didn't change anything. And because I didn't change anything, nothing changed. Those 10 years were just the same. It was just continual, repeated, um, bad situations as far as dating is concerned. Then 2017, look what happened. I was confident. I was certain. I was in forward momentum. I got out of my comfort zone. I made a decision. I made a declaration. I started doing, heck, I don't, even as I'm telling you guys the story, I'm, I'm hearing it and hearing myself tell you the story going, okay, some of these things might sound a little quirky. She's buying stones. She's putting love all over the, the stuff. She's wearing her shock, her, not chakra. She's wearing her like crystal around her neck. I don't care how weird it sounds to you. I really don't because the bottom line is when you do something and you believe in it and it's something positive, and, and you're moving towards something, you know, whether it's like physically you're moving towards something or like metaphysically, whatever you want to call it, you're not hurting anybody. You're doing something positive for yourself. And the bottom line is, guys, here's the long and short of it. I ended up meeting the most amazing love of my life. I am so ridiculously crazy, insanely happy in love. My husband's out there in the kitchen right now hearing me record this. Um, we're wicked crazy, madly in love. We've been together. Babe, how long have we been together now? Can you hear me? 
maybe not. Okay, so I think actually I'm recording this in August. This December, we'll, we will have been together four years. Um, we just, ever since we've met, we've not, I mean, unless it's been like a small business trip, we've not been apart. We do everything together. We never fight. We enjoy every second together. We can have respectful business conversations. We have fun together. We have, you know, we love each other. We're friends. There's intimacy. There's, there's love. There's lust. There's friendship. There's, there's respect. There's everything. Like, it is the greatest thing you can possibly imagine. So everything I did worked. And I'm, I'm, I just, I'm absolutely going to peek at my notes here just to make sure that I'm telling you. So as I wrap up, I wanted to make sure I told you, t told you, <laughs> told you. I keep saying that I told you. I told you. I made a decision, a declaration, a commitment to myself. I believed that this would happen. And that's the truth. I read so many books on manifestation. Um, and I'm going to link up because there's some really great books that were written like in 1938, you know, about the art of believing, believing. That's so key. There's such a difference between wanting something, but when you believe in something, there's, everything is different. Um, I listened to books, podcasts. I told people about my future husband. I talked about my future husband as if he existed. So I, I walked the walk as if it was already happening. Um, I behaved as if it was already true. I asked for a sign. I got the sign. I prayed. I prayed every single day. I prayed for what I wanted. And I did. I would not settle for anything less. Um, I never doubted that it was going to happen. I took action. I got out of my comfort zone. I played. And then when, this is, this is probably one really good thing to close on because when Steve and I met, and I think this is so key, this is where we both were coming from because, you know, this is kind of like when you meet that person, it was so great because I finally, I remember meeting him and I'm like, I, I want to meet somebody who will love me for who I am. I, I, I spent so many years trying to viewing myself as, as clearance material and I finally met somebody, I'm like, I just want someone who wants me for me. And, and I played no games. I was like, I'm going to be 1000% me. If that means that like, I just remember one of the things is like, I remember wondering, is he gonna like me? Cause I swear, is he gonna like me? You know, I, I just come from a history where everybody judged me for everything. I was criticized for everything, for my hair, my nails, the way I dressed, you know, just everything. And I just decided I'm going to be, I'm going to dress how I want. I'm going to talk how I want. I'm going to be myself. And the greatest thing is, is we were just completely ourselves and, and both of us just, that's exactly what the other person fell madly in love with. So I, I encourage you that when you do meet the person, that's also how you find the right person is by not playing games. Don't try to make yourself be the perfect person to catch the perfect person. Just be who you are. Because when you really, really are just completely 1000% yourself, the right person will be absolutely batshit crazy about you. And, and it really, really is true. Um, and then lastly, I said this too, this is a good one. I made room in my life for love. And you know what I mean by this? This is what I think is also symbolic. Um, a lot of you who are divorced who are watching this, sometimes you're clinging on to things that symbolically or, you know, I think this is more symbolic, but sometimes, you know, like I, I still had my old wedding ring and I it was such a beautiful ring that I was wearing it on this hand. And for years I had that ring and I had, um, I, I was wearing that ring. And then I remember when I was living in Austin, I still had the bed for my last marriage. And there were just all these things. And I was like, if I really want to have this person come into my life, why do I have things that are like still represented, representative of my old life with, you know, my starter husband? And I did, I got rid of everything. And I'm like, I need to, I need to get rid of all of this stuff and make room for this amazing person. So I encourage you to think about that too. Like, do you have things that are weighing you down? Do you have things from your old life that don't represent the new life that you want? Get rid of them, make room for the life that you want. 
something to think about. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I hope this got you excited. I hope this encouraged you. Of course, I'm sure I skipped over something. I'm sure I missed something, but um, I just want to close up by saying I, I couldn't feel more strongly about this subject and, and I don't want to, I, I can't encourage you enough to say that it is absolutely positively doable for any of you watching this video to find love at any age. Um, so I met Steve, I'm 52 now. That means I met him when I was 48, 48, 47-ish. Um, and without question, he's like, he's who I've been waiting for my whole life. My whole life has been leading up to meeting him. Um, and, and this is the kind of love that I would want for anybody. This is what, this is what love should be. This is what relationships should be. So if you have any questions, I mean, I think, I think I've pretty much covered everything. I, I really think that the main points are getting out of your comfort zone, changing, um, believing in yourself, just making a declaration, deciding to go for it, you just, you've got to absolutely believe in it. And then you've, you've got to make, you've got to take big steps. I mean, I remember I, the first thing I did is like, I made this declaration and then I still wasn't even on a dating site. I had to have my friend like push me and go, get on a dating site. Sometimes it, you know, like logic can, can escape us. So change it's got to be change it's got to be big action it's got to be different than your old life and i hope that this was helpful to call attention to maybe what you haven't been able to see because certainly i wasn't seeing it i wasn't seeing it i just kept wondering like why me why me why me but luckily i had um enough friends to call attention to some of the, some of the things and I made the changes and I hope that this video is super motivating for you guys to go out and make the changes. And I certainly hope, like I said, three, six, nine months, a year from now that I see people coming back to this video telling me that it inspired them, that they went out and made changes and that I'm going to see all these kinds of comments coming in that you guys met the love of your life. So I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. And again, I hope to see some successful love stories coming back here soon. Thanks everybody for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you are subscribed. Of course, not only subscribe, make sure you're hitting that little bell so that you're notified whenever we put a new video up. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time on The Kelly O Show.